Let's talk about Sir Finley in the Tombs of Terror. Hey, buddy, watch this. That's right. Sir Finley is going to be the second playable hero for the Tombs of Terror, which means you might want to jump right in with him. And uh, I thought we'd talk about his hero powers and signature treasures in this video so you have some idea what you might want to prioritize when you're unlocking things or going back to do other wings or future runs. Uh, these are the things I think are going to be the strongest for you on average. That said, let's go ahead and jump into some of these cards and hero powers. So up first here, let's talk about the weakest of the hero powers in my mind. It's Bubble Blower, one mana with an overload of one that discovers you a Shaman or Paladin minion with Battlecry. Now keep in mind, this is not negatively impacted by the Discover changes recently, because this is specifically class minions already. So you are within a pretty specific pool here. That said, there are some pretty amazing battle cry minions for both Shaman and Paladin, but there are also some pretty bad ones. There are going to be instances where you get like Grimscale Chum and like Sand Wasp Queen and like Totem Cruncher as your three options. And you're going to be like, oh my God, I don't want any of these. I think usually you'll get something decent, but it may not be high synergy with your deck. There are so many options that it's really hard to find something predictable, uh, reliable, and strong and fitting. So you might want to do other things with your mana or just play other cards, and you'll kind of just be adding a bunch of average things to your hand, which in a dungeon run style, when you've got like really specific cool things you can do, that often isn't going to pay off enough. You'll be prioritizing the cards in your deck that you've buffed, you've done cool things with, treasures, uh, signature treasure cards, whatever it might be. You're going to be focusing on those instead, and I think this hero power will often kind of play second fiddle to your deck and may not really offer that much advantage. So moving on here to my second favorite hero power, it's the default basic one, new recruits, two mana, summon a 2-1 Amalgam Explorer. That essentially means it's going to have all minion types like nightmare amalgam which is really cool because when you're building uh, a deck suddenly a mech package with magnetic cards is like oh my god yeah that's perfect or murloc synergy cards You're like yes okay cool i can actually work with that this gives you a handful of different ways to build on those tribal associations in a really cool way even like totem cards suddenly make a lot of sense too right when you're summoning all these totems not to mention just getting minions reliably by hitting the button can be good if you've got any spare mana laying around unlike our last hero power where yes you get a minion you gotta spend the mana on this one at least is hitting the board immediately and uh consistently you know what to expect which can be nice when spending your mana instead of kind of tossing it into there and hoping for the best uh and because of that reliability because you can build on this it offers you a direction to take with your deck building your treasures etc i think this one's just a little bit better than the previous one still fairly weak in the scheme of hero powers in my mind but still something to work with and then finally my top hero power for finley is power up which gives a minion divine shield and wind fury which can be absolutely incredible because in dungeon run style modes like this you can often cheat out like really big scary stuff early in the game whether it's like a cheap signature treasure minion or you've done something like discounted a lich king and put it in your hand you've gotten some treasure that makes things cheap usually you can play big unreasonably statted things early in the game and being able to leverage those with the card like power up is absolutely bonkers whether they're taking trades with that divine shield or just hitting the opposing face for a ton with that wind fury that's a lot of upside and there is a little risk here that you don't really have a minion to buff with your power up uh, or that maybe you're buffing a minion that can't already attack but particularly in normal non-heroic runs you'll usually be ahead on board a little bit and have something that tends to linger around i think power up is far and away your best option here the other two are kind of mediocre. This one I think is solid. Still maybe not as good as some of the other class of zero powers, but clearly something that will win you games. So now let's move on to Finley's signature treasures. There are of course six slash seven of these, and uh, I'm gonna rate those again from worst to best. Starting off with Finley's Pith Helmet, which I don't think 
is particularly good. It's a two-mana spell. It gives all your minions plus two health. Like, obviously, that would be amazing in standard constructed Hearthstone. That'd be OP. But in the scheme of signature treasures, although this clearly does something good, it's still weaker than your other options, despite the fact that it can also go infinite by shuffling it into your deck. I think that might actually be a downside in some cases, because it might be worse than your average card, because as soon as you fall behind on board, this one's really tough. It doesn't like offer taunts, it doesn't make the opponent trade into these stats. Protecting you against fatigue is kind of cool, because you just never take fatigue damage with a card like this one, but that's not enough upside to make it worth it. There are better things you can do with Signature Treasure, so this one ranks at the bottom. Moving on to Max well, mighty steed. I love that Finley's uh, Scarab here has a name and a card. He's a three mana, three five beast with rush and reborn. And he also has plus two attack for each other minion on the battlefield, which is a cool bonus. I don't know that it's necessary. I think even a three mana, three five with these rush and reborn mechanics would be pretty strong. But the fact that he can trade into some big stuff. If there's just three or four minions on board, right, the attacks scale very fast, plus two attack. So it only takes two other minions on the field to get him up to seven, one more to get him to nine. He's trading into almost everything at that point. So, and he can do it twice in a row because of Reborn, right? As soon as he comes back, he's going to gain that plus two attack. It's not a battle cry. So just an instant clear on two enormous things is a pretty nice option uh plus you can value trade a couple times too become a threat on board because of all this attack you could follow up each minion you play is suddenly like a savage roar on your maxwell mighty steed so uh sticky scaling damage is pretty nice as well which means like yeah this is a great minion this is gonna be the best three drop in your deck if you run this thing so uh opportunities to build on it with like beast synergies and other things as well just a solid card still better options of course this is the second to the bottom but this one feels okay so now let's move on to the Junior Scout. And just a reminder, if you didn't see my previous video, this card will upgrade into a Senior Scout after you complete all four wings of the Tombs of Terror. So uh, we'll talk about that a little later in the video. But at its base level, still a pretty cool card. A three mana 4-4 four, four with Charge and Wind Fury. And it also reads at the end of your turn, deal four damage to a random enemy minion. So a pseudo Ragnaros style effect there that can't go face. So what you've got is a card that can do a few things, right? It can technically take some nice trades on board, kill off a couple smaller minions if you need to, and then finish off a third with its uh, long-term effect. Alternatively, it could just go face for eight damage, which is pretty exciting for three mana, and still like kill off a single minion, creating a really problematic uh, minion for the bosses to deal with because it's like representing eight. And if you have any buffs or shenanigans to support it even further, this charge and win fury can be really bonkers. So all in all, a very powerful minion to add to your deck. Moving on here to the scales of justice. I think it's still really sad this wasn't called Splashbringer. I did not come up with that name, but it's a great name. Four mana spell though, and it transforms all minions into 1-1 one, one Murlocs. And it also fills your hand with random Murlocs that cost zero. So this does a couple things. Basically, it's like an ultimate board swing style card. If your opponent has a bunch of scary 8-8s out there or some kind of high synergy thing going on, uh, or just a high value minion with an effect you need to neutralize, Scales of Justice will do that, right? It will completely wipe out your opponent's board of any value. It'll just turn it into one ones, which, you know, still might be minions, but ultimately probably aren't that threatening. And then it also gives you an entire hand worth of resources that you can play immediately. And often when it comes to Murlocs, they do things nicely together, right? It only takes like one Cold Light Seer, maybe a Murloc Tidecaller, maybe a War Leader, and you've got yourself a really nice reload that's big stats, but also a lot of counter aggression. So this card, I think, will enable you to flip boards in a very favorable way. The downside for Scales of Justice, the reason it's not a little bit higher on this list, is that when you are ahead on board, this one feels kind of bad because you might have like really big minions that you don't want to transform into Murlocs because this affects your side of the board as well. So even if you need like a reload of resources, you're kind of hurting your own board, and that's not something you're necessarily going to want to do. So there are some limitations on this one. Moving on here to Carl the Lost, which is actually the first signature treasure that's available. So for me to rank it this high, I think it's pretty cool. You don't have to unlock this one, but I think it's very, very good. Carl is a five mana, six, six. Uh, so a little bit expensive in some ways for these signature treasures, but 
think his effect is so strong that it's okay. He summons you six silver hand recruits, and he gives all of your minions taunt and divine shield. So on an empty board, he gives you six one ones with divine shield, six uh, like righteous protectors, because they also have taunt, right? And that could be a very annoying thing for the opposing boss to deal with, right? Like you're just gonna have to take terrible trades. You got a six six that can do some cool stuff. If you have any sort of buff follow up that can give those things extra attack, say even like a bloodlust, because remember you are a shaman and a paladin as Finley, then you're creating opportunities to flip the game and often just push for lethal opportunities as well. That's a really cool setup, right? So whether it's defensive or maybe a setup for a push, uh, combo damage burst kind of thing, Carl can do both of those things. But if that was the only thing Carl could do, I'd probably put him a spot or two lower on this list. Another thing Carl can do is just give your minions that are already on board taunt and divine shield. He's not only giving the one ones taunt and divine shield. So if you have like a couple five fives on board, for instance, Carl can give those divine shield so that they could take really favorable trades. And that can be even more advantageous. Plus he's just going to fill up the rest of the board with one ones with divine shield, which is an awesome upside. So because he can set up these scenarios where you can create like defensive walls of stuff you've already played, create value trades of stuff you've already played, reload the board, set up for burst damage, Carl can do it all. So yeah, I'm relieved that this card looks powerful and will probably be something people are excited to play. That's awesome with a good flavorful card like this one, particularly that you don't have to unlock. This is a really cool option and uh, although not the best, very, very good. Moving on to my second best treasure, we have the Senior Scout, a three mana 6-6 six, six now. Still has Charge and Wind Fury, but also uh, bumps up the uh, Ragnaros effect to six damage as well. So uh, now a 12 damage burst minion if you want him, uh, clears bigger stuff from the board. So a little bump here from his junior nature. Uh, considerably better, I think, for that reason, right? Like that's really quite a bit of extra damage and six is a meaningful breakpoint over four because there's a lot of like five health stuff or six health stuff lingering around out there so this becomes better in the late game essentially than just like an early game swing opportunity you know maybe clearing a three drop of your opponents suddenly this can answer some pretty big stuff has more survivability as well so even though it might look like a linear jump from four to six I think it's much more impactful than you might expect, and that's why he's jumped three or four spots on this list as well. This is a very, very powerful asset to have in your deck. Crazy turn three play. Great. This would be a great six-mana minion, right? Like, this would still be powerful. So Senior Scout is clearly just amazing and will vastly improve any, any deck that he's dropped into, so can't go wrong with this one. That said, I don't actually think it's the best option I'm reserving that for the True Silver Lance, and this is maybe a surprise to me even. <laughs> I'm not sure this is um, going to be true, so you know, proceed with caution on this one, but in my instincts, True Silver Lance has more upside than even Senior Scout, and it is a 3-mana 5-1 weapon with Lifesteal, which is very important, and it also reads, after you overload, gain plus two durability. So with True Silver Lance, the durability on this is going to scale really quickly. It's not hard to get overload cards, and you maybe only need a couple to make this thing super OP. Even one makes this pretty ridiculous. But if you get like two or three overload cards, True Silver Lance is going to create a lot of health swings. And I think that's very important against Plague Lords, for instance, which have... 300 health. So a weapon that can keep chipping them down while also contributing to your own survivability, in my estimation, will create a much better opportunity to go long against Plague Lords. Because what I imagine will happen is you'll just keep getting your health chipped down and chipped down over time against these Plague Lords. And eventually you'll just kind of crumble under the pressure because they have so much time to enact their game plan. True Silver Lance just keeps making that 10 health swing every turn. Maybe more importantly, healing you so that you can stick around a little bit longer to last against that onslaught while you chip away at that 300. But at the end of the day, I think it's so long lasting, so impactful over time that the True Silver Lance will in fact be the best signature treasure for Sir Finley. And there you go, guys. Maybe some bold claims in this one. I think 
some people's instincts will point them in different directions for some of these cards, and hey, that's okay. That's why we're all here, right? That's why you can leave comments below. Tell me why I'm crazy so that the next viewer to come along can be like, yeah, okay, that guy in the comments actually made some great points. I totally agree with him. Or maybe you think, oh, no, I think we just got it right this time. Either way, options are good, so please leave your thoughts, whether good or bad. We want to hear them all. We want to see your take, because this is all a little bit of guesswork and ultimately you know play to what's fun for you and uh, use your experience to guide you in the future towards the treasures that uh that give you the facial expression that finley here above me <laughs> he has because he is in love with some of these particularly these scales of justice that said thank you so very much for watching and until next time game on